Turbo motors are a highly advanced industrial product involving many advanced alloys and represent the pinnacle of industrial design. They are produced here, near the coast, in a large factory, where many different processes are automated. Turbo motors are used in a number of applications, including industrial mining drills, all terrain off road recreational vehicles automated truck delivery systems, ambulatory bulbous aliens, trains, and more. The complicated manufacturing process to produce turbo motors begins here, on this tropical plateau. Here, the raw material from which aluminum is made is found. The aluminum ore, known as bauxite, lies close to the surface in the rich red earth. Industrial mining drills break up the earth and harvest the raw bauxite. Yes, those same mining drills containing turbo motors. A conveyor belt transports the raw bauxite through the forest. And each mining drill uses its own conveyor belt. Vast quantities of raw resources are extracted from the forest, with no impact to the local ecology. The resources are transported to a nearby factory, which specializes in processing bauxite. After arriving at the factory, the bauxite is distributed among many chemical refineries, where it is mixed with water, lime, and soda ash under intense pressure. The water is pumped up from the lake below the factory, using large, spinning turbines. A small portion of the lake has been preserved for the local wildlife. The water is then lifted up to the factory by a series of pumps. The alumina solution created by the refining process is moved to a new set of chemical refineries. Here the solution is agitated to form aluminum hydroxide crystals and under immense pressure and heat is transformed into aluminum scrap. The aluminum scrap is taken to a lower part of the factory via conveyor belts. The aluminous scrap is combined with silica under intense heat inside of a forge. The molten aluminum is then poured into molds and cooled to form ingots. The aluminum ingots are then combined with copper and heated once again to form an aluminum alloy, which is then formed into plates. The aluminum plates are then transferred to another machine where it is combined with copper sheets to form heat sinks. The heat sinks, being the finished product for the factory, proceed down a conveyor belt to be loaded onto trains, to be transported to another factory. A railroad system has been built to allow transport of finished goods between factories. After being loaded, the train starts its journey through the forest to the next destination. These factories require vast amounts of electrical energy that come from various sources. One such source is visible here. A geothermal generator takes advantage of the naturally hot spring. The steam rising from the vent turns a turbine, which generates electricity. To the north, along the coast, a different form of electricity is being generated. Large seams of coal lie close to the surface, so no blasting is required. Bumps on the head of the drill, called knuckles, break up the rock. As the drill pushes farther into the ground, a new section is moved into place. The broken up rock is transported via conveyor belt to the nearby power plant. The power plant is situated by a lake, the water source for the steam with which it generates electricity. The coal is pulverized and then fed into a furnace which creates immense heat. The water is then transformed into high pressure steam. The steam enters and rotates nearby turbines generating electricity. 
Harmless Mist is then ejected into the atmosphere. For aesthetic purposes, it is dyed black, but is not harmful. Oh look, the train containing heat sinks is approaching the next factory. Here in this massive factory, many machines are hard at work. Once the train comes to a stop, it is automatically unloaded. Then, the heat sinks are taken into the factory via a conveyor belt. This factory, in addition to the heat sinks, requires vast quantities of quartz, oil, and other materials, which it harvests from the nearby landscape. The quartz crystals and the heat sinks, in addition to the locally created supercomputers, are combined in a complicated process to create radio control units. These radio control units, or RCUs for short, are then loaded onto another train, where they will be transported to their final destination. Now begins the long journey through the landscape, and eventually passing through the heatsink factory. Along the way, a large structure is visible in the distance. This imposing structure houses 36 nuclear reactors and is responsible for providing the majority of the power for all factories. The reactors run on processed uranium fuel cells, the source of which is found here to the north in a swamp. Inside a cave, raw uranium is mined. The tungsten carbide drills uses a combination of blunt force and liquid acid to break up the ore. A train arrives and is loaded with the ore, which is mildly radioactive. The train's route back to the reactor lies along a cliff's edge, which was built with an acceptable level of casualties. Arriving at the factory, the uranium will be unloaded and then processed. Sulfur is mined nearby and is transported into the factory via a conveyor belt. Inside a chemical plant, it is transformed into sulfuric acid. The acid is used to dissolve the uranium. Unwanted materials fall to the bottom of a tank, while the uranium acid solution is transported to another chemical plant. The solution is then heated, solidifying the uranium into pellets. The pellets are then encased in silica and wire to form encased uranium cells. The encased uranium cells are then combined with electromagnetic control rods to form the nuclear fuel cells that will be the fuel for the factory. The fuel cells are then distributed among the reactors where they are immersed in water. Their radioactivity heats the water, generating steam, which turns a turbine and creates electricity. 36 nuclear reactors requires a large amount of water, which is pumped up beneath the reactors from the lake below. The water is then lifted up to the reactors with a series of pumps. Harmless steam is then ejected into the atmosphere. Another byproduct of nuclear power generation is nuclear waste. The waste is collected and loaded onto another train where it can be stored safely in a nearby waste dump. Thanks to proper procedures and safety protocols, only 92% of the nearby ecosystem has been compromised. The train arrives at the nuclear waste facility. The nuclear barrels are stored here safely, far away from any living thing. 
and wind has yet to carry the radioactivity to the shore. As the train makes its return trip to pick up another load of nuclear waste, it appears we have come full circle. The turbo motor factory is visible in the distance. And in the area around it, many industrial mining drills are extracting a variety of different ores, such as aconthite, barite, beryl, bornite, cassarite, magnetite, molybdenite, pellucidite, abubidite, cinnabar, chromite, galena, spherite, uranite, wolframite, Harry Potterite, pyrolusite, malachite, Michigan, blubberite, adamantite, mithrilite, chacoprite, kalutatite, it's game night, and ilmenite. The raw ores are then transported via conveyor belt into the factory. Once in the factory, the ore is distributed among many smelters. By fire, be purged. The desired metal, once isolated, is poured into ingots. Here, the ingots are milled into screws and are placed in buckets on a conveyor belt. The screws are combined with copper sheets, which will form the core of a motor, the rotor. Elsewhere, more ore is being purified. Here, iron is separated from other minerals and formed into ingots. Carbon is then added to the metal in a foundry to form steel. The steel is extruded into sheets and then welded into pipes, which are then wound with copper wire in an assembly machine. This creates the other main component of a motor, the stator. The stators and rotors are then assembled into a fully functional motor. The train containing radio control units is about to arrive at the factory. After coming to a stop, the train is unloaded and the RCUs are put onto a conveyor belt. The finished components for crafting turbo motors are then lifted to the top of the factory. Radio control units, motors, stators, and AI limiters. A skyfish, otherwise known as a space whale, flies through the structure. Although appearing intentional, this gap being the exact size and shape to allow passage of the endangered species is pure coincidence. At the top of the factory, the final stage of production has begun. The finished goods are assembled inside manufacturing machines into turbo motors. The turbo motors are put onto a conveyor belt and lifted higher still. Once arriving at the highest point of the factory, the turbo motors are thrown into the trash. Ha 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 For decoration, a few statues are on display.